Hello everyone and welcome to this video. I'm of course uh, Master Xeon 1001, your favorite blender tainer. And in this tutorial promotion for a gum road, I'm going to be talking about the pipeline of going from Substance Painter back to Blender using that magnificent cycles rendering system. So without further ado, let's go ahead and uh, get up in this and uh, show you what we got here. Now Roscu was done uh, based off of a concept drawn by uh, our concept artist Jeff Paulsren at uh, Dead Panic Studios and then modeled for a client to use in a film that has not yet been um, finished yet. So whenever there's more news on that I'll definitely be um, making more videos about that as well. However, um, you know, basically over here I have a very simple node graph. You know, we could just get rid of all these nodes and um, just start over. However, like I said, this isn't even a Blender video. This is about Substance Painter. So without further ado, let's go ahead and open this up. Now, Substance Painter you can buy on Steam, um, or you can just buy from Algorithmic. Um, yeah, it's not free, open source, you know, so, you know, um, you're going to have to go and check that out. Now, right now, uh, it's like 149 You know, when I got it, it was a lot cheaper, and the price is definitely going to go up since its worth is going to steadily increase as they keep adding more and more awesome features. So, you know, if you're asking yourself, hey, why are you not using, um, you know, Blender's texture painting, just know that this is leagues above it. So it just is going to work out a lot better. So, you know, the first thing I did... Um, was under the new I just opened uh, the OBJ and so now I have it here in fact the first thing I always do is turn off the environment and focus up the mesh now the 3d view you just hold alt and click to rotate um, but you press F1 F2 F3 to go between all the alternating views so you see here that we have um, you know full screen on F2 full screen UV on F3 and then F1. Now to uh, go back over the UVs, we can, uh, let's see, tab into edit mode, change this to a UV view, and you can see that I have UV shells laid out. However, for some reason he was broken into separate material groups. So what I'll do is go back over to Substance Painter, we'll load it again. Now as far as material groups, they represent different texture sets. So having all of these things that are part of the same UV sheet show up on the uh, wrong set is just I don't want to go through that um, because they were so perfectly UV to fit all on one sheet so I will go in the uh, base meshes and load up the head OBJ and so now we see that all of our UVs are all on one sheet and this one's pretty much useless I don't even know what's there uh, so with this we can go ahead and get to work however uh, due to some edge splitting it shows some artifacting so I, I probably want to revert back one model so for that um, what I'll do is just real quickly go over here and just re-export it so one moment I'll get that tank now one of the questions that I do get quite a bit is how do you go about exporting the mesh for use in substance painter in which I'll usually laugh and I'm like you know what do you mean you just select your mesh export OBJ. Um, over on the left side I'm going to go ahead and choose uh, selection only um, and all of these following boxes that I think are automatically checked keep vertex orders uh, one always check generally as well and then I just export so back over in substance painter we now have this new mesh loaded up meaning that we can uh, you know actually get to work so the first thing we'll talk about is the bake textures um, you can actually bake textures from a high poly mesh sometimes I boost all of my maps up to um, 1024. Uh, as far as normals uh, and all this stuff goes, um, you see these exclamation points and it means that basically you need a high poly mesh in order to bake accurate information if you have high poly information. However, without it, you can still just make it. And so in this case, what we're gonna do is just leave everything at its default and we'll see that these maps are still baked. However, it uses the mesh that's currently in the viewport. and you'll see a little bit of darkening we might see my desktop if it doesn't work out but cross our fingers it's gonna go through now baking textures is great it opens up all the possibilities that you ever dreamed of now usually if I don't have normal information 
I'll just clear that one out because uh, it'll put notches in places where I don't want it. So um, I know that there is no normal information for me to bake from my mesh that you see here because this mesh is what you see here. So, you know, we look at our ambient occlusion. These maps are pretty nice. You know, we can't export them out. I mean, we probably can um, by just making it fill layer, but you know, really these maps are for internal use, but we'll get to the external maps. Uh, now the good thing about baking all your textures is it instantly makes your smart materials begin working. So we haven't even began going over this uh, right side of the screen. But you know, like I said, this is basically just going to be a quick video of just me just giving you all a quick rundown on how it textures this guy. So without further ado, let's go ahead and begin. So I don't even need to look at the UVs, I'll just press F2. And so there's two types of layers. You can add a regular layer and just choose any material to be as a foundation of your brush because you're painting five channels at once. So as you see here, um, I press C and jump through my channels. There's my color, there's my height, there's my roughness, my metallicity, and then I press M and I'm back to material view. So with all of these things happening, it definitely makes everything a lot easier. Um, especially when it comes to painting these maps instead of going to Photoshop and doing a bunch of compositing of maps. Now the other types of layers are fill layers. Now fill layers are especially my favorite because you can add a fill layer, you can choose any of the uh, custom materials that they give you or the ones that you make and then it'll just automatically change it. Now the good thing is that you can layer these on top of each other to begin building your base. So to make it easier on you guys, uh, I didn't want to come in with any pre-baked maps. I want to do everything from scratch. Um, so, you know, we'll start off with like a uniform plastic. Um, you know, maybe shade it to be dark. And we'll uh, play it. And you see down here, you know, you can play with all of these after the fact. So even after you've layered a ton of these, you can be like, you know, I want that black area to be shiny. You know, I don't even want that black area to be black. I want it to be red, you know. So here's my first fill layer. We'll add another fill layer. This one will make uniform cobalt. And you know, I'll play with the roughness, get it about where I want, you know, change the base color. Now think about these smart materials down, I mean, uh, not smart materials, just regular materials, is that once you select it and you start changing the parameters, it's no longer that material. It's something else now, you know, you've changed it. So, you know, I just use them as like starting points. Now you notice that I always choose the uniform ones down here at the bottom. It's because some of these other ones have textures in them or are driven by S bars or uh, SBS files, which I find sometimes to be a little bit slow in, in the, the heat of battle, um, as you're about to see. Now the other thing is you can actually add layers to your mask because we see that this is filling the entire layer. We probably don't even want that. So we can right click and add a black mask. Now a black mask is, as it says, a, a complete black layer just like Photoshop. However, you can press um, 1 to go to brush, 2 to go to uh, eraser, 3 to go to projection, and 4 to go to geometric decal. Now this is, number 4 mode is my preferred mode for making any sort of mass related operation. So anytime you write me about it, I'm like, yeah, talk about 4 mode, right? And you press 4 to you know start setting up your mass instead of dealing with the uh, color selection stuff. Now it shows on my wireframe, you know, I don't want y'all to see that, so I'm going to go ahead and hide it. Now, if you're interested in this, as far as uh, how it's made, there's also a course about it. But to stay on task, uh, with this black mask, I changed my color to white. And I'm actually gonna make it where everything I click that is a UV island will get unmasked. So basically, this is how I would go through and shade this thing as quickly as possible. In fact, you know, this is actually no effort compared to um, other applications in which I find texturing to be of much effort. But, you know, the goal is to quickly get in here, get done, and move on to the next thing. Um, so right here I'm just selecting random segments. Well, not so random, you know, I personally want these to be this one. So we'll add another fill layer. On this fill layer, I'll go to the Uniform Plastic. Uniform Plastic is my favorite because it starts off shiny, it's also obnoxiously blue but we're gonna change it to red. And from here, right click, add a black mask, and select more segments. Now, for symmetry, uh, we can actually click this button up here that'll turn on symmetry, and you see the symmetry plane. And now everything I do on one side will affect it on the other side, which can make your life easier if you're, uh, you know, needing that. 
Now the other thing is I'm layering materials on top of other materials um, just because, you know, some settings I just didn't like in lieu of other colors being introduced into this equation. So, you know, I just override them and basically build what I call the base. In fact, since this is just an offshoot of, um, you know, the actual tutorial series that's incredibly long, um, I'm just going to go with a whole new scheme for things. Um, now, the other thing is that you can also use layers and levels and generators and filters on your mask. So to go into that, um, you know, first let me show you a smart material. So this is all fine and dandy, but we click this little sphere here and we could choose something like metal machinery. And this one will actually overlay everything with just ruined metal. And we see up here in the corner that my resolution is still 1024. If I doubled it, it'll look even better. And if I make it 4020, uh, 4096, it'll look even better. But instead of using the smart materials, I'm not really a big fan of them. I like making this stuff myself procedurally. Um, but you have these cool options in front of you. And it's only because you bake these maps that the smart materials work. If I didn't have these maps, it wouldn't have any of that information to go off of. So to go in more detail on what that means, um, we'll just make this uniform cobalt and I'll add a black mask. And instead of, um, you know, Unmasking, I'm going to right click on this mask and actually add a generator. And on this generator, we're going to choose the MG Mask Builder. And now, this mask builder is an entire tool set for you to customize where your wear is coming from. And the best thing is, while it is procedural, it is unique to your mesh because it's using your mesh's information to generate all this information. So, this is really powerful. In fact, that's something we'll be coming back to probably uh, later or, you know, um, some other time. But in short, this is an introduction and that's probably more advanced. But this is stuff I go over definitely in the uh, Rosku series that will be uh, linked in the um, comments or linked in the um, video description. So be sure to go check that out. Pick it up if you're a big fan. But let's continue. So, you know, I'm going to go ahead and turn off this X because I don't like seeing it. Now, this option here is for Lazy Mouse. If you're familiar with ZBrush, you'll definitely love Lazy Mouse. And this one allows you to change between your 2D, 3D view and your 3D view only. So that actually comes in very handy as well. So the next thing here is, um, you know, we're going to go ahead and add another bucket. This time I'm going to fill it with a uh, uniform black, which is uh, basically a type of rubber. Now, if you don't understand PBR, just know that right here they're interpreting rubber as being this black this roughness and this amount of metallicity now when it comes to metallicity there's really no question metallicity uh, for me is either is it metal yes or no if it's not metal don't give it metallicity it makes your life a lot easier now I might want this to be like some gimp rubber so I'm gonna pull the roughness in a little bit and I'm gonna go ahead and right click and add a black mask and now I can just go ahead and just select some sections and start, you know, nailing down um, some of these colors here. But the best thing about this is after the fact, any of this I don't like, I can just change. I click on this layer, go into its mask. I'm like, you know what, I want that to be blue. Um, in fact, I don't even like that. You know, I want this layer on top and I want it to actually be red. So instead of unmasking it, you know, I'm just going to make it red. And, you know, I, what I will unmask is this area so it's not there. Now, I can also use grayscale values to modulate between the two, but I, I try to be pretty precise. In fact, if we press 1 and get out of um, geometry decal mode, which is a strange name for that up mode. I wish I, they called it just a selection stamp or something. I don't know. But you see that, you know, I'm moving through this really fast. And it's only through the power of my UV shells that I'm able to do this. So, you know, we're going to go ahead and add another piece. And on this one, we're going to uh, lower the roughness. In fact, we may want to raise the roughness because this one specifically is going to be used in this area. So... Right now, since I'm on a mask, all my brush options have changed into uh, stencils. However, 
you know, I can go here, raise it to black, raise it to white, and just paint in my mask if I wanted to. Now, I never paint in mask that way. Instead, what I prefer to do is um, go into number four mode and change the color to white and just use, you know, UV stamp. So you have an option here for UV, object, face, and I think for um, the two other options I hardly ever use, but I do use this one pretty heavily. In fact, this thing looks like it's actually part of another layer. So we're going to go to this texture set, which is probably a byproduct of the way that I have it set up in Blender. And I'll just add a fill layer, and now we're done. So now, going back to the top here, we can go ahead and add probably another fill layer. And go with our trusty uniform plastic. You know, this time we're gonna go in the yellow range. I will right click, add a black mask. And instead of it being this one, we're gonna use UV. Let's see if UV works. Uh, UV changed more than we wanted. But you see that there's a little bit of bleed here. And that is mainly due to me working at low resolution. Um, this program's quite powerful to the fact that you know whenever I'm doing a, and in fact on my computer I guess I do a lot of things so people tend to blame all my computer issues on the fact that I happen to even have my open right now Photoshop iTunes substance painter substance designer you know, I have those programs I'm not using but they're my buddies they hang out with me I need them you know I might go back and uh, hang out with them later you know or more accurately, I probably have work I need to do in them later, or even right now. But um, now we got this uh, basic setup going on here. Now, in light of layers, there's one thing I never noticed, and that's that we don't have the ability to collapse layers, like just merge a bunch. But you can select your layers and press Control G, like Photoshop and any civilized program that has a grouping system, also including Blender and you can group them so we're going to call this base and so all of our texture work has been consolidated into let's get rid of this layer i was like who did that um so now we have all of our layer work consolidated in this one base and we can turn it off we can add another layer go on a whole nother adventure and just use mass to just cut between them like worn um material and things like that but if we press c Here's our color, here's our height, here's our roughness, here's our metallicity, and so forth. Now notice that on the metallicity, it's strict. Like this is all metal. What's white is metal. And so in Blender, I want to make sure that that has me metallic properties. So continuing on, I'll press M and we're going to look at the top here. I definitely do not like this. Like I could ignore it and hope that y'all don't see it, you know, but anyone with a key and I'd be like, hey, why you do that? So just notice that by raising the resolution to 2048, it pretty much takes care of it to a noticeable extent. Now I could raise to 496 and it'll just be gone altogether, but also there's a chance that my computer could crash and y'all won't get this video. So um, continuing on, I'll go ahead and add these to it as well. And so it's easy. Um, I just go and select that layer, go to the mask, press number four, and I could just select that little island. And this is about as quick as it's going to get, I think, for the texture game. Like, there's there's automated solutions. You know, you could be getting into Quixel Suite and all that. But really, this is as fast as I think it's going to get. And Substance Designer is great, too. I mean, you know, if you got an IQ over uh, over 100, get Substance Designer because it's, it's the future. It's the future of texturing. Like, if you think texturing is something that uh, should be avoided at all costs, you know, why even put yourself through it? Just take my word for it. Get this program. In fact, um, the updates that it alone definitely make this program completely worth your while. So that's a paint job that's relatively unique. But let's talk about what if we wanted to put a decal on this guy? Like, let's say we wanted to stamp him with a decal. Like, let's um, go ahead and do that. So I'm going to add a regular layer. Now the difference between layers and fill layers is you cannot paint on a fill layer. You can paint on a fill layer's mask, but a fill layer, as his name implies, means that it is a fill layer. 
but paint layers you can just paint on you can decal on so let's uh, go ahead and do that now the cool thing about substance painters I can go up between um, resolutions and instead of it actually down sampling or down resing it actually redraws and recalculates everything making it that much more accurate so I can go and work on this thing at 256 jump it up to 4096 and it won't look like I just like stretched an image up it will actually take into account all the brush strokes that were made and basically redraw it so sometimes you'll see that um, you know the process of going up and down is a bit slow and that's because you're really not supposed to be doing that but for me I like to do that so let's go ahead and bring in an image so the way I like to bring in images is I'll drag it onto my textures so I'll just do that real quick all right so from a folder I have off screen I'm just gonna drag in a cushion pattern that I made a while back and here we go and so basically with this cushion pattern we could even use this to help our fill layers so just to show how that's done I could add a fill layer and we can drag this image over to base color we could drag it over to height we can drag it over roughness we can drag it on metallicity even and once you do that it's influencing those channels now the cool thing is once I put it here you can click this little lock and actually play with your scale to get it to tile good so that's probably about how I want it. And then from here, I can actually drag it onto the height as well. And you can see the effect that this pattern is having. And we can black mask it, press four, just select a side piece. And it's a complete transformative you know, experience. And then the best part is, you know, if the height is too much, we can just turn the height down by going to the height layers and just telling the height hey calm down bro you know we can go back to the fill layer itself and edit it after the fact like you know what I don't want it to influence the color I want it to only to influence the um, height information so now I can just play with this add more if I want and it just works so this is one way you can add in manual textures and things like that like uh, you know we'll go ahead and just delete that but another way is let's say that we had an image that we wanted to um, project so I'm just going to drag in an image of some cracks and uh, on this regular layer that we have not a fill layer you can actually press number three and that will put you in stencil mode and you can drag your image over and put it on base color and now you see your stencil on the screen. Now controlling the stencil is just a matter of holding S, left clicking, right clicking, middle mouse clicking. And what happens when I start painting this? That's up to this. So right now the roughness is being affected, the metallicity is being affected. I only want this to be the color and the height. And so I'm going to drag these cracks over to the height as well. And for my brush settings, you know, just like Photoshop, I can exp expand my hardness to uh, make my hardness harder. Play with my size, my flow. You know, it's just like Photoshop. I don't know what this stuff means. Um, you know, I never mess with flow, but you know, you can see over here kind of the behavior. And you can even test your brush before you use it in the port, which I think is uh, really cool. You know, play with your spacing. But we're going to, you know, keep it fairly hard you know I press the brackets and open it and now I'm just painting this on here in fact for the height it looks like it's being a little hard on it so what we do is go ahead and paint this get it over with actually We may need to go in Photoshop and actually give it an alpha, but you know, instead of painting cracks, let's go ahead and stick with the decal. Sorry, I lost a uh, train of thought there. So I'm gonna drag in another image that um, I like to use as decals, and that are these cat buttons. I mean, that is these cat buttons, not that are. So we'll drag this onto buttons. We will um, go to height, drag it to the height, so basically we're now going to be stamping cats on here so holding s right clicking middle mouse button right click just to scale it on so 
so there we go and so you know maybe on the side here probably want a kitty as well so for this I'm just going to extend expand my brush using the brackets hit it bam I'll press 1 to get out of that view. Now you see that the masks look pretty bad, and that's because I'm at 1024. We jump up to 2048, which is my normal resolution. We see it looking a lot better. However, the height is looking very bad. So we go to the height and we take a look at this. You can actually tone the height down, make it more reasonable, which may work. However, it's actually digging the cat's eyes in there, which is unlike a sticker. So if we press C, we can look at our channels and so the height is the channel we want to look at and so the cool thing about layers is even after the fact you can add a levels which you know I love my levels we want to affect the height channel and just push that in in fact that didn't even work out so we will try another way and that is add a fill and this time we're going to go to the height channel Alright, it's not going to let us fill it using that. So let's just delete that, bringing it back, and we're going to try levels again. Back the height. And we can go to the roughness tone down to roughness if it's the roughness that's giving us trouble or is it the metallicity but basically every level can just be individually controlled but you know these stickers are looking worse than before so let's remove the levels is the levels the one doing it yes it is and you know I'm just gonna go ahead and just turn the height just down In fact, another way that I could probably just fix the height is to uh, look at the height channel. Again, I don't know why it shows the yeah, transparency. I'm sure it'll probably fix that in the next version. I'm going to go ahead and just choose any material, you know, turn on, turn everything off except height. I'm telling you, once you start clicking these parameters, it's not the same material anymore. So it's like, do you just want to start off with something kind of like rubber and make it into Kevlar or, you know, it's up to you. So there's that button and now there's that button. So now we look at it and it's all smooth and groovy. In fact, we probably want to go and touch up this one. I think I probably just had the values a little a little too clamped. So, you know, going back, we can even, you know, use two mode, go into eraser, and just knock that out, as well as come up here, knock this out. You know, no reason I can't be a little bit more thorough. There we go. So now Rosku, more cat friendly than ever. So, continuing on, um, I'm going to go ahead and put this one in its own group and just call this uh, stickers and we'll just call this uh, stuff one. Alright. You know, it's like I have to be professional. I'll put a one at the end. Alright. Um, now, inside of stuff, I want to show you all another trick. Um, if you're the kind of person who uses ZBrush, then you by no doubt know about the E3D Mac tutorial that came out years ago that was just awesomeness. It was Mike Jensen doing what he does best, showing us how it's done, sculpting a Mac. But the cool part is E3D gave out the brushes at the end, um, which I found to be really nice of them. And I use their alphas in this program. So if you're curious about these alphas here, you can actually go and get these alphas, just type E3D Mac stamps and you will find them. If you're a Blender user, you really need to expand your horizons and check out a little thing called ZBrush. 
It's the bomb diggity, you know. Um, now I added a fill layer, and you might notice that the the stamps are still showing. That's not gonna work. So what I want to do is go over to height and change its blend mode to replace. So now it's basically replacing whatever um, this layer is touching. Now instead of having it wash everything, we're gonna put a black mask, and we're gonna press uh, one. And we're just gonna just drag one of these stamps over here. It doesn't even matter what material this is because we're just painting the mask. The mask is nothing but grayscale. But with this thing in place, raise the hardness, you know. Now, everywhere that I stamp, it is going to be metal based off of that layer. Now, I could have just used a metal stamp. But the reason that I'm doing it this way is you'll see in just a moment. And so I'm showing you all of this and it really is as easy as it looks. Like, um, you know, it's, <laughs> when this program first came out, I, I found it to be pretty simple in what it did, but I stuck with it. And now, you know, the program is adding on all the stuff, like new features everywhere. and. For me, it's just a quick read. It's like, you know, I can eat a bowl of cereal while I'm learning this. Um, now, what I can't learn is, here, we'll clear the mask and turn on symmetry. You know, I should have learned better about that. And, you know, in retrospect, let's choose a cooler stamp like this one. Now, instead of using this in project mode, we want it to be part of the brush itself. So that's why it's here. And we're just going to stamp these around occasionally, a little more than occasional. Now, while I'm doing this, uh, like I said, Rescue is a tutorial course that's being sold by the studio I work for, Dead Panic Studios. Um, so definitely go pick that up if you're curious in its creation process. Also, there is a very long and thorough rendering video that goes over the workflow of rendering this guy in like nine different applications which I was exceptionally proud of because I found it to be a little bit difficult to get it to work in V-Ray at the end. Like, uh, you know, I had, it's one of those times when you have to look in the mirror and ask yourself, you know, um, what do I have to do? What do I have to do? You know, so go and pick it up. So I think I'm almost done stamping here. You know, I'm waiting for someone to grab my shoulder and say, Hey, you've done enough. You've stamped them pretty darn good. You know, but let's take a look at what we have. So I'll press M or uh, press one to get out of uh, that mode. And now I'm just back in regular, or actually I wasn't even in a uh, projection mode, sorry. Um, what I'll do is sometimes I get these programs confused. Like I jump between a lot of programs, like, you know, be honest, I'm also, in Maya rendering uh, Pepper for the game Pepper and Roni, which is a game that we've been working on internally as well. So I'll add their link in chat as well. Um, you know, give them a like. But basically, you know, all these programs are like, <laughs> it's hard to jump between them sometimes. But the more you jump between them, the easier it is to jump between them. So I'm going to add height. And notice how it's digging into the surface with the flip of a switch. And I am able to, you know, customize it however I want. Like if I want these things sticking out of the surface or digging in deeper. And also the resolution is kind of crap. You know, I'm not going to lie. I can actually fix that. But before I do that, I want to show you all more cool stuff about the program before I jump to 4096 and kill my computer. So we'll just uh, go back to our base color channel. Uh, we haven't looked at any of this stuff. Environment maps come with this program. And all of them, you know, are various ways to just look at your model and uh, go about it. However, um, I tend to stick with the simple ones. Like, this one's pretty cool. Studio. Studio's just a studio lighting setup. You know, but it gives me that, um, you know, professional machine look. Also, you have shadows. Shadows are ill. But shadows are very slow. Also, I think I have shadows on this box, so... Uh, let's turn that off for a minute. There we go. Alright, I thought I was getting shadows from the mirror plane, but 
Yeah, and usually when I add shadows, I, I brighten it up a little bit. But the shadows is like the finishing touch I'll put on at the end. Now the other cool thing is that you have um, options for your AO intensity. So if I wanted to push that in or push it out, I can still do that. Also raise my quality here to, you know, more pixels per inch or something to do with the substances. Now 64 is a bit high, but I'm gonna pretend like I forgot to set it back and show y'all post effects. Now post effects is another fun thing. You can turn on post effects and it'll start rendering your model using the same engine that's being used in the next Final Fantasy game, the Ebus engine, which I just, you know, as a Final Fantasy fan, I think it's awesome. So, uh, you know, continuing, we're gonna turn on anti-aliasing, awesome. We're gonna turn on color correction and, you know, hit up that saturation, you know, and that contrast, you know, really on that contrast. Contrast is my buddy. It just does things for me. Uh, brightness. Um, we'll go ahead and close that one. Ne next one is depth of field. Depth of field is great. Boss hates it. <laughs> uh, put on everything I send him. Um, so you can raise your focus diameter and then mean your focus distance, then your aperture diameter to, um, here we go. So usually you want to put your amount of blur and then choose your focal point and then maybe fine tune it. So something like that. And then, you know, there's tone mapping, uh, tone mapping. You have your exposure. Uh, a good friend of mine told me to raise the exposure, lower the camera to, uh, get a nicer look. And you can even jump between linear, Reinhard, you know, lock sum, linear sat. You know, nobody, nobody does that. Crazy people do that. What sane people do is they'll go to the glare. They'll turn on the glare and be like, where is it at? Well, t let me tell you, you lower that threshold and then you raise the lumens and then there's your glare right there. But we wanted something reasonable like that. And then vignette, you know, vignette's good. So I'll bring the vignette in. Now another thing is that in your preferences, you can change all your controls. In fact, you can go in your preferences and earn the controls. Um, but my background color is one that, you know, I change occasionally um, between like a, a multitude of different colors. Um, today it's black. And this is what will show on your background. So, you know, that is awesome. All right. And then lens distortion, nobody hits lens distortion. I mean, it just... I don't I yeah I don't I don't like it all right it's just I don't I, and also it frays my edges it makes my image look kind of yeah so you know I'll leave that one off but I'm gonna go ahead and snip this because this version of him looks pretty awesome in my opinion so I just use my quick window snip tool to just grab that I'll just put that on the other screen for later and um, you know the thing is that these post effects do kind of myrtleize your computer I'm not gonna lie I got dual graphics cars, myrtleization. So I'm gonna go ahead and just turn that off. And also I'm gonna save it. Now control S will save the file. And luckily if you um, just name it something reasonable, um, it'll work out for you, but it saves it as these very useful SPP files. In fact, I don't even think that was the train of thought I was thinking here. Um, One moment, locating directory for saving, boom, found. Um, so we'll just call this um, Rosku test. And from here, uh, we'll add a, another fill layer. Now this fill layer, we're gonna go ahead and give it uniform titanium and probably a different background just for the moment because I do want to see environment. And from here, we're gonna right click at a black mask. We're gonna right click that and go into the generators. Now generators is something I definitely go into more depth on on the Gumra. Um, however, I'll just do a quick rundown. You have these for, the empty mask is the king of all mask builders. If you don't know what you want, just go with the mask builder. This thing has so many parameters, you'll have a field day. But for me, I do want like edges, like worn edges. So I'm gonna go with just edge select and you see that it's a little dithered because I'm in 2048. If I jump it at one more res, it'll it'll do it. It'll be where I want it to. But really, I already know what I'm gonna get because I can just work like this. 
and then export it as a 4096 map and it'll up res it during the export process and then I'll just see it in my render engine looking good and I won't have to worry about it murdering my computer so with this thing here I'm just basically telling it to make um, everything cobalt that is in this mass area of the edges that like I told y'all is interpreted from all those maps that we baked um, but what's interesting is you can even add the height and what do we have we have a chipped edge just like that just that's the chipped edge that's all she wrote so you know we're gonna go ahead and just um oh yeah you know one more thing i like to do is put dirt on them yeah you know, i like to make these people look a little grody um so i'm just gonna put a concrete you know concrete people are like why don't you use concrete it's not made of rock you know it's like you know i just need color values really like i just need noise and i need it to not be procedural and some of these presets just they just work really good for the same thing like i love concrete concrete's everywhere on my stuff like uh sometimes influencing just the roughness so you know i got this here and um you know we're gonna leave just the roughness being influenced by it and press c to look at the roughness channel and we can even put a levels on here and play with the roughness and really get it to be a black to white situation maybe maybe more blacks to the whites though in this situation there we go so with this I press M and I'm back and you see that I have all this like specular noise basically happening all over it and I can even go back here change it to color bring back color change this to multiply lower its uh, opacity and just do things like so now another thing you might be asking is hey where's the particle brushes at and hey this model looks like crap so let's fix that the problem is is if we look at our roughness channel that is crap that's a bunch of noise and it's black to white so whenever I do this kind of stuff what I like to do is actually uh, lower the roughness influence to be you know a little more localized like it's just slightly influencing it you know just ever ever so slight like that and we go back and it looks pretty smooth except in reality we know that there's scuffs there and that the resolution here is uh, being a bit misleading now particle brush is also a big thing um, those are the other types of brushes here um, like for example you can choose a fracture I'll just go with a black uniform plastic it's a good friend and if we just draw a stroke maybe a bigger stroke all right for some reason saying no material oh let me go into one mode my mistake so it's always important to be aware of what mode you're in like one two three four so you know I, sometimes I get lost I'll just hit one so I'm going to choose this again and you know instead of just drawing a stroke I'm going to enable height and I want that height to dig in and also let's uh, make this green and so I'll pull a stroke down the face and you see that this is just this stroke has taken a life of its own and that's good sometimes but you know, press space bar and it'll pause it but in this case I don't want him to look like that so I mean the particle brushes are great and all but there's uh, just there's there's a lot of times in which I'm like I calm down go away brush stop doing that like you know you can experiment with them and play with the parameters but I just really haven't felt like uh, going through all the all the uh, rigmarole of um, getting the stuff to work perfectly however I do love that sand or rain rain is rain is real nice like I'll use rain um, and then just pull back to color and we look at this thing and like now it is definitely different you know 
like we lower the noise amount or the uh, normal influence wait that one's roughness the height we want to lower the height influence and there we go and we'll just call this stuff stuff two See, roughness is green. Base color is multiply. Metallicity has no hold over me. So now we are pretty much near the end. Now I just want to double check and make sure I didn't miss anything in this quick little intro here. In fact, for a quick little intro, it's been about 45 minutes. However, I did want to have a video of this sort at least up on my channel so just to do a quick recap you have four sets of different layers that you can choose to lower influences of you can add a regular layer a fill layer a smart material a group and delete a layer you can also add effects configure mask edit layers but I never click that stuff usually I just right click I mean I can even put a mask on this group um, but what I do like to do is uh, you know I'll put a fill layer fill it with an object and then turn off color roughness or color metal and have just a roughness and I'll use this to like kind of equalize the layers if I find that things are getting real dodgy between layers you know like uh, you can have a fill layer that's just roughness to just kind of equalize everything now when it comes to exporting you can just right click and choose export all channels and you can choose your folder and the export options you want now there's more advanced ones here, but that's I go over that more in the other videos. Um, but from here, you can choose your maps and the format. So I'd want to send out a 4096, pretty much like that, and you know I would just export. However, you know before we get out of here, I want to show y'all what this guy looks like at 4096. So I'm gonna drag this shelf off the screen, just because I want y'all to see it full screen. On my monitor and then we will go ahead and raise this now like I said this is probably going to murder my computer but since I only have three folders ooh, screen flashed uh, told y'all told y'all okay actually computer murdered thanks a lot you guys so one moment while I deal with this technical catastrophe. Oh my god. Alright, I'm back. Now, now there is only one. You know, that crash actually crashed everything. Which, you know what? I'm still going to 4096. I don't care what these people do. Let's see it. Let's see it. Oh. There's 4096 goodness. Let's turn off um, post effects. Let's um, you know zoom in on this, and now you kind of see the resolution here uh, looking a lot better. In fact, this will be what it'll look like when I take it back into Blender. Um, so with that, let's go ahead and uh, turn on those post effects one more time. Let's turn on those shadows. The shadows what makes it awesome. And see, so you can hold Shift and rotate your light setup around. You know, really get that money shot. So something like that and you allow it to just kind of kind of settle for a moment you know it, it does some sort of a, I guess ray trace operation you know I really can't wait to see what happens as a result of them adding this version so once they do um, I know they definitely have great plans for this uh, algorithmic has yet to disappoint me so in addition to that, let's turn all this stuff back off again. I remember what I was going to do before before everything crashed. I'm going to jump back down to 2048 because I really don't want it to crash. And what I was going to do was add a fill layer. Choose uniform plastic. It's just obnoxiously blue. Choose black mask. Press number four. Change this color to white. Select that piece. Maybe change it to UV. Select that piece. 
algorithmic if you're watching I would definitely love for a feature where we can add um, where we can select edge loops and paint them based off of edge loops but we'd have to have some sort of uh, tightening system built around it I think but um, I think that would be like the next step for uh, you know selection tools so now I've got all these uh, materials here just coloring the hoses and so I'm just going to change them to uh, various colors you know make that one red uh, make this one blue or green or yellow you know red white and yellow you know And so we see that on the yellow one, we have actually selected one that we probably didn't want to. So I'll go back to the mask, change the color to black, click it, and we just see that they are attached in the UV view. So no biggie. We'll just make a cobalt, lower roughness, and we won't talk about that no more. So to wrap this video up, keeping it around an hour that's my goal um, I'll go ahead and uncheck this one and on this we'll just use document channels we are going to send it here we're going to call it um, YouTube text and just export all right I'm back so for this final part we're going to go ahead and begin dealing with the um, rendering process of this uh, guy as far as getting these textures back into Blender. Now, as far as PBR and Blender goes, um, you know, if you understand the roughness and their conversion rates, it's really not a big deal. I'm just going to go ahead and delete them. Um, but, you know, this one's going to be real quick. Online, if you just look up Blender PBR, you'll find that someone made a Blender PBR material. So we're just going to use that, um, like I said in the uh, gum road, actually break it down um, to what the system actually is and how to go about it. And so I'm just dragging my maps over and we're just going to begin um, looking at them. So here is my color map. So if we render it out, it's looking like this so far. So, so far so good. Next one is to bring in the roughness. Um, when it comes to roughness, you want to make sure that you understand that, you know, in, in Substance Designer, black is shiny, white is not. In Blender, maybe it's the same way, maybe it's not, you know, definitely want to be aware of that. So plug this one into the roughness, bring in the metallic, and plug this into the metalness. Bring in the normal map. For the normal map, I want to probably you know add a normal map node it's attention space normal so I don't even have to change that we'll plug this in as well and watch it all go dark no not all the way dark so now this guy is almost complete and it took us no time at all in fact we can even bring in the height and plug the height into displacement and really get the buttons looking the way that we want them to so with that we just sit here look at it render and that's that's all she wrote but it isn't for me you know I want to go up here this light sucks does it Heck yeah this light sucks um, so maybe we want to change it to a, maybe a particular color where's all this dang brightness coming from there you go so let's see environment that's doing it all right so something a little more along those lines and then you know just continue through the process now the method I used in actually texturing it, I went through and uh, procedurally uh, added wear to all of the edges and just did the works on it. So this is 
really just a very, very uh, quick rundown on how I would approach uh, using Substance uh, Painter and Blender in the same pipeline. But if you did like this video, definitely go check out the Gumroad that'll be linked. And thank you for watching.